We may wonder whether your chances of surviving the Titanic depended on your ticket class. So one way of doing this is just think of the passengers on the Titanic as being divided into the two groups of people who survived and those who died. And then we're going to look at the distribution of class within each of those two groups and make some comparisons. So in terms of our contingency table, this basically means to, uh, to convert all the values into row percentages. So it's called row percentages because we're going to think of our total now as being at the ends of each of the rows. So the 711 people here, those are the people, the number of passengers who survived. I'm going to think of those, that group of people as 100%. Okay, and I'm going to study them. And then we're going to go study the 1,490 people, consider them a separate group, and study them. And we're going to see again how the distribution of class changes between these two groups. So one thing we should do is convert, convert the rest of these numerical values into percentages. So for instance, right now we don't know this cell here. Now this cell would be the percentage of people who survived. So that's important to because because what comes after the of is is your is who you're considering the total. The percentage of people who survived who are in third class. So I'm going to take my 178 and divide it by 711. And then times by 100. And when you do that, you get 25%. Okay, and similarly, for this entry here, we may want to know um, now, now we're thinking of all the people who, who did not survive, those who died. So that's our total. How many of them, or what percentage of them, were crew members? So I take my crew number of crew members at 673 and I divide by 1490 because I'm again I'm limiting my attention just to those who died and when you do that you get 45.2 percent okay so again if you just reading this turning turning these into row percentages we can say things like 16.6 percent of those who survived were second-class passengers 35.4% of those who died were third class passengers, etc. Okay, and so it, the point is that you want to focus on the language. Who, who am I considering the total when I say these things? That's different than the, the overall percentage um, table we made in the in the previous slide. Okay, here we're we're considering the the call of uh, the the ends of the rows is representing 100 percent And then we can make some comparisons based on these two groups and how the distribution of class changes between these two groups. So when we look at each row separately, we say that we see the distribution of class under the condition of surviving or not. So we think of dividing our the entire ship into the two groups, those who survived and those who died, and then we look at each group separately and see how the the distribution of class looked within each of those two groups. And the reason we would do this is because we might be interested in whether whether or not your chance of survival depended on your class. Okay, and that brings up this notion of what's called independence. Independence. So I'll give the te textbook definition here and then we'll try to apply it to this example to make better sense of it. So variables are considered independent when the distribution of one variable in a contingency table is the same for all categories of the other variable. So let's, let's just apply that to this example and then I'll, I'll embellish a little bit about how you should think about independence. So it says variables are considered independent when the distribution of one variable, so in our case we're going to look at the distribution of class, in the contingency table is the same for all categories in 
or of the other variable. So our other variable is survival. And then the other word we need to sort of emphasize is this word same. When I say same, I don't mean same numerically. Okay, it doesn't mean that ha does not necessarily mean that we want half the um, uh, half the people who were in first class, you know, to survive and have to die. That that's not what we mean by same. We need we mean same percentages. Okay, same percentages. So let's let me ask the question and then we'll we'll go about answering it. So if I just said is survival is survival independent of class? Is survival independent of class? Or another way of thinking of it is, does your chance of surviving depend on your class? So there's many angles that you can come at this from. Let me just start, let's, let's focus on first class for instance. Now, from a previous contingency table, we learned that 14.8% of all passengers were in first class. Okay, 14.8% of all passengers were in first class. So, in a world in which survival and class were independent, Here's what we would expect. Now I'm going to I'm going to describe this sort of using visuals and forgive the fact that the words I'm saying might be saying kind of strange because I'm going to be talking about putting people into bins, but it, it's helpful. Think of there being two bins. You've got a bin of people who are going to survive, and you've got a bin of people who are going to die. So one bin is labeled alive, the other one is labeled dead. You take your group of first passenger, uh, first class passengers. We know this is 14.8% of all passengers. You start sorting those people into the two bins, okay? And then you take your group of second class passengers, sort those people, do the same with third in the crew. Here's what you should expect if these two variables were independent. What you'd expect is, you, you now have two totals now, right? They correspond to our two rows. You've got two totals. You walk over to the bin that's labeled alive and you look in. What you should see is that of those people who are alive, 14.8% of the, those should be from first class in a world in which survival and class are independent. And then when you walk over to the bin labeled dead, you should look in and you should see of that group of people, you should also see 14.8% of all the passengers in that bin where we came from first class. That is what perfect independence would look like, okay? All right, so now let's actually answer the question. Let's look at our table. Is survival independent of class? Well, if you just look at the first column, that's our first, that's our first class passengers. It looks like of the survivors, the first class passengers made up 28.6%. 28, 28 and of those who died, they made up 8.2%. So this is going against what we just described should happen in a world of true in independence. In other words, first class passengers are overrepresented. They are overrepresented in the survival group and they are underrepresented in the dead group. Okay, so the way you would answer this question, you'd say no. The percentage of those who survived and were in first class is much greater. than the percentage of those who died and were in first class. OK, 
okay? Again, and, and we should expect those percentages to be the same if survival in class were independent. Um, so I'm going to say, therefore, it seems chance of survival dependent on class. Okay, at least we can, this suggests, oops, depended, this at least suggests that being in first class depended, what's wrong with me here? Chance of survival depended on class. I mean, at a minimum, we can say that just looking at the first class passengers, they're overrepresented in the alive bin, they're underrepresented in the dead bin, okay? Those percentages don't match. So they are not, uh, they are not independent. Now there's, there's much more, there are many more complicated ways of, or I should say nuanced ways of analyzing independence because it's, it's, we're never gonna get the percentages to match up perfectly, but the gap between 28.6 and 8.2% is large enough to suggest that we can answer this question. Okay, and there are other ways of uh, thinking about independence, but hopefully this example and the, you know thinking of those bins at least laid the groundwork for your understanding um, later on.